Hello everybody, my name is Laura and you're watching the Bean Bird 2 channel where we talk about testimonies and the goodness of God. And today I want to talk about bad habits and I'm going to use a personal story from my own life of having a bad habit of biting my nails. Now I know that this sounds like a very minor habit to talk about, but it did bring me a lot of shame and I think that the things that go with bad habits actually apply to all bad habits and the symptom and the solution, they're very similar for, for whatever it is that you want to overcome. So try to see it through that lens as you listen to the story. So when I was a little girl, my mom used to clip my nails and she would clip them really short. And it was painful actually the way that she would clip them where it just kind of made it, well painful maybe not the right word, but uncomfortable. She would cut them really short. And I always hated it when she would cut my nails because they felt like super weird for a long time until they would grow out a little bit. And as soon as they would get long enough again to where they didn't bother me, she would cut them down again. And um, one time I was complaining to my brother and I was like, man, I hate it when mom cuts my nails. You know, just hate it when she does that. And my brother said, you know, if you bite your nails, she'll never cut them. And I thought about it and it was like, hmm, that seemed to make sense. I mean, I was probably like five or six. So to me, that was like, hmm, I guess if I just bite my own nails, they'll always be short and then she'll never cut them. So right there, I want to stop and say that reminds me a lot of like Adam and Eve and, and the fruit with the serpent, right? It's like the Satan just comes in and says, you know, hey, you know, look at this tree over here. You know, you could do this thing. And I think that a lot of people start bad habits like smoking or pornography or, you know, in this case, nail biting from a little suggestion that comes from the outside sometimes. Um, not always, but in this case, this is what it was. And so I thought I would try it. I thought, well, I'll just bite my nails one time and see what happens. Well, sure enough, my mom didn't cut my nails the next week. So I was like, she looked at them and she's like, oh, these are pretty short still. And so I got away with it. So then I kept doing it. Now my nails kept getting shorter and shorter. Now initially what started off is like this thought in my head, I'll just bite them a little bit. But soon that little bit turned into a lot. Enough to where my fingers were sore again, but from me biting my nails too short where I would start to tear it and then it would tear below the nail bed line and maybe be you know, bloody or painful. And so it actually made my original problem way worse by trying to tackle it myself. And then as I grew older, I began to be embarrassed about my hands and I would try and hide my hands, especially, you know, if somebody would take a notice and be like, oh, you're a nail biter. And I'd be like, oh, you know, um, when I went to get married and have the wedding pictures done, they wanted to do a wedding picture of my hands. And since our wedding was really a low budget. We didn't have a lot of money. I had just gone to the drugstore and bought some press on nails to put on my nails that I was embarrassed of. And even with the, the press on nails, when they did the wedding photo of our hands with the rings, I remember feeling just so embarrassed. Anyway, I think that bad habits, they're just something that we do that to soothe ourselves, to comfort ourselves, to make us feel better. Maybe it's a distraction or way of managing anxiety, but it doesn't lead to what we're really looking for, right? Like every time there was a, a movie that was suspenseful, it's like, boom, my hands would go in my mouth. And um, I just began to feel like I would never conquer this habit. And I would try and try and try and I would fail. And I would even have moments where I would succeed for like, you know, maybe I wouldn't bite my nails for four weeks, but then I would always end up back in the same cycle. And I began to feel like I would never overcome this stupid habit. And um, what really changed in my life was I, this was after I was baptized with the Holy Spirit, and I realized that I was lacking self-control. And I needed to have that self-control, and that self-control was a fruit of the Spirit. And that as much as I had tried in the past, Unless I had Jesus to help me overcome something like this, I would keep failing. And I think that's kind of where Satan sets us up, right? He tells us to try harder and we fail. 
Um, and when we fail, Satan, you know, kind of mocks us and was like, look at you, look how weak you are. Look at you did that thing again. You turned on the computer again. You, you know, had another drink of alcohol. You had to look at you, you're pathetic. And you start believing these things and they come into your head and you feel just so like, oh, even worse. Um, but this is the thing. What, the way that I conquered it finally was that I kind of did this mental pivot and I was like, Lord, I need you to help me overcome this. And I want your spirit to help me overcome this. Even though it's a small thing, nothing is too small to involve God into and to, to take over. And I decided that I wasn't going to try anymore. I was just going, I wasn't even going to make it an option. Like, I'm not doing this anymore. It was like, I really put my foot down in my mind, like, failure is no longer an option. I got really serious about it, and I kind of, like, mentally disagreed with all the negative things that Satan was telling me that, you know, I could never overcome or I could never stop or I was a failure or a loser. All that negative talk that you fight from within and around you. And so I had to make extra accommodations to be like, oh, if I'm watching TV, I won't even put my hand like this. I, I'm going to make sure my hands are down on my lap or on the armrest, and I won't even, you know, put them near my face. And whatever the bad habit is, you know, maybe it's like going to bed at a certain time um, so that you don't fall into um, a bad habit or being around certain crowds of people or parties where alcohol is served or where other people are smoking, like you know where to set that boundary and kind of go farther away than would maybe be, like maybe you don't even go to a party where alcohol is served because you don't want to see other people doing it, What whatever it is. And um, the thing is that um, there's also stigmas that come with bad habits, right? And so people, especially certain ones, people will look and condemn and say, um, you know, this bad habit is, is worse than another. And, and the thing is, a lot of these habits, they are hurting our own body. Um, you know, it's things that we do that hurt the temple that, you know, the Holy Spirit lives in. And so... As tempting as it may be to say like, oh, well, it's just me. I'm going to put my focus toward, you know, serving outward people. Um, it's important that we also are taking care of our own bodies and that we're not abusing the bodies that God gave us. And that when we pray, he will give us the self-control that we need to overcome whatever it is. And it doesn't matter, you know, whatever it is. Um, and I think just inviting the Holy Spirit, it helped me to finally quit the habit. And now I have been not biting my nails for um, coming up on two years now. And um, I am glad that the Lord helped me to overcome that. And um, I think bigger than that is realizing that we need to rely on the Lord for our comfort and cast our anxieties on Him and not, you know, cast our anxiety on, you know, nail biting or cigarettes or porn or alcohol or any of these other things that we inflict on ourselves because we're trying to self-soothe. We're trying to feel better. And the more that we try to self-soothe, the more the enemy condemns us the more he puts shame on us. And then it just makes it worse because then we feel worse about ourselves. So then we want to self-soothe more and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And we'll never have the strength to overcome these things on our own without the Spirit. And Jesus wants us to have full, happy, joyful lives. And he doesn't want us to be a bondage in bondage to these things that we turn to to try to make ourselves feel better. So, um, I don't know. I just want you to feel like you're loved and that, you know, you're not condemned and you can overcome these things, whatever it is in your life that you want to give up. Just if you give it to Jesus, he will help you have the strength to overcome. So that's it. Thank you.